Welcome back, everybody. This is Upgood, and today we are continuing going through the beginner 3D tutorial in Unity called John Lemon's Haunted Jaunt, or John Lemon's ha Haunted Jaunt 3D Beginner. And before I actually go back and start doing uh, more of the uh, Blender 3D wiki book, um, I'm I'm gonna finish this tutorial, um, and whenever it ends up on a, whenever it ends up on four videos uh, for the day, um, then I'll switch. So hopefully we can get through this not too long from now. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure I'm everything's cool. Yep, everything's cool. Okay, what are prefabs? Prefabs are a special type of asset that represent a game object or a collection of game objects with components that are already set up. They're like a blueprint, which you can use to easily make instances of the same thing. Each instance of a prefab is linked to the prefab asset. So changing the asset will change all versions of the prefab in all scenes. I see. First use of this system in your project will be to make the character prefab. That means that if you go to make multiple levels for the game, you won't need to remake John Lemon for every level. You can just instantiate uh, a new prefab. Prefabs can be identified in the hierarchy window by their blue name and icon. For instance, John Lemon actually looks like a prefab, technically speaking. Um, but hold on a second, that John Lemon game object has a blue name and a blue cube icon. But there's a small white piece of paper over the cube. Is that John Lemon game object already a prefab? It's something close. And you need models work like read-only prefabs. They're blueprints for creating instances of that model. But the blueprint itself cannot be changed. Okay. I got it. Um... Turn the character into a prefab. You need to be able to change things on this free prefab, so let's make a new one that you can adjust. Drag the game object from the hierarchy into... Uh, let's see. Drag the game object from the hierarchy into the assets prefabs folder in the project window. Okay, so... Into prefabs. Okay. A dialog box will appear asking if you want to make an original prefab or a prefab variant. Select original prefab. Original prefab. Okay. Why is this thing not going? There we go. Dragging the game object in this way makes it a prefab regardless of the folders dragged into. To keep projects tidy, it's helpful to save all the prefabs in the prefabs folder. Got it. Now the John Lemon prefab has been created, any changes you make to that prefab will be reflected on the instance of the John Lemon prefab in the scene. In order to make changes to a free prefab, you will need to open the prefab for editing in prefab mode. Before you do that, save the scene by pressing Control S or Command S. Uh, now you can open the John Lemon prefab. Control S to save. Okay. In the inspector window, Click the Open Prefab button. Alrighty. I just did that. I guess this is similar to how Godot does scenes. So prefabs are sort of like... Are sort of like uh, Godot scenes. Whereas scenes in here and prefabs are a little bit different. Um, okay. Unity Editor is now prefab mode. This mode takes you out of the scene you were editing before and puts you in a temporary scene uh, with just the prefab. The scene view has changed slightly at the top. There's a new bar which says Scenes John Lemon on the left and it has a checkbox labeled to autosave on the right. Right. Scenes uh, pipe or scenes John Lemon is the breadcrumb for the prefab currently being edited in prefab mode. In this case, you're only editing the John Lemon prefab and going back from here would take you back to the scene you're editing. 
Disable the auto save checkbox. Enabling this will slow you down. A save button will appear so you can manually save changes you made to the prefab. So, let's turn that off. And we did so. The hierarchy window also has a new bar at the top. Okay. John Lemon. On the left is an arrow which will take you back along the breadcrumb. If you click the arrow now, it would take you back to the main scene. Throughout this 3D beginner project, you'll edit prefabs, and most of the time you'll do this by entering prefab mode. Getting used to switching between editing game objects in the scene and editing prefabs are the core to using Unity. Now you're ready to make your first change with John Lennon prefab by animating it. And I'm going to go ahead and switch that and, and then see what happens, and then see if I can go back into the prefab and reopen it. So let's see what we got here. That, if I click on this, Okay, so that's not the prefab here, is it? Hmm. So how do I get back into the prefab? That is the question. John Lemon? Okay, so I basically just have to click on the prefab, like this level, whatever that is. Oh. Okay. John Lemon. Okay, so I can just open that back up. Okay. So now that I know how to do that, animate your character. Let's see, your player character is going to have two different animations in this game, a walking animation for when the player moves it, and an idle animation for when they are not, when they do not. Select the John Lemon game object, and take a look at its animator component, and the inspector. The first property is called controller. This makes a reference to the type of asset called an animator controller, which you're going to use to get John Lennon moving. Animator controllers contain a state machine, which determines what animation the animator component should be setting for its hierarchy at any given time. This animation is based on animation clips, which have been set up in the an animator controller. Okay, so controller, what... Oh, I see. Interesting. Okay. So let's mark this as completed. Okay. Create the animator controller. First, let's make an animator controller. One. In the projects window, find the assets animation animators folder. Right click on it and select Create Animator Controller. Create. Where is Animator Controller? Okay. Name the Animator Controller John Lemon. Rename. I'm not sure what's going on here. way to rename it rename okay
Oh, I see. You name it and then open it. For editing in the animator window. It has two main sections. A panel for editing the animator layers and animator parameters on the left. An area which displays the state machine itself on the right. Click the parameters tab on the top left of the animator window. Pardon me. The animator controller state machine makes decisions based on the current values of its animator parameters. These animator parameters have, have values set by script. You will need one parameter for every independent variable which can affect the animation that the character is playing. John Lemon is going to have two animations. Okay, so... Um, I guess before I continue on, I'm going to say uh, that should about wrap it up for this video, and uh, we'll continue with the uh, uh, parameters in the next video. So, um, let's see. I guess I should time this a little bit better because right now it's at 30 seconds, and you know I can stop it here. I guess I'll stop it right here. Okay. And I'll see you in the next video.